Hi guys, Every Knife Guy here, and I just wanted to kick off a new paracord series to you guys. It's going to be a mini series, and this is going to be introducing the material of paracord, and we're going to talk a little bit about uses, and also get into the absolute basics of knot tying, stitching, weaving, all that stuff. So, if you've been around my channel for any length of time, you've probably seen a paracord video or two by now, but um, this basically assumes no knowledge of paracord. You may have picked some up. Uh, on, a, on a random whim in an outdoor shop or something like that or you may just have seen some videos around the internet or pictures on Instagram or whatever and be curious about what you can do with paracord, how to get into it and how to get started so I figured I'd put together a mini series and a few different videos and uh, just give you guys my thoughts on it and these are going to be longer videos, probably quite discursive of uh, my thoughts and and tips and tricks that I found working with paracord over the last uh, little while and um, yeah, we're gonna gonna have some fun with it hopefully and look at some different things. So the first video here is just gonna introduce the material and look at the basics of how to work with it, how I work with it, and um, yeah, stuff like that. So if you don't know, paracord is an abbreviation of parachute cord and uh, traditionally a military material used as you'd expect in, uh, in parachutes. And um, the traditional military spec uh, paracord or what is often referred to as mil spec is 550 paracord. There are, there are six grades uh, from very fine paracord up to much more extreme, uh, more extreme than this 550 cord in fact. But if I refer to paracord or the paracord you see on my channel will almost exclusively be 550 paracord which is this stuff here. Uh, it's a few millimeters thick. It is a, a loose outer casing over inner strands. Now but what I mean by that, let's just go ahead and cut this open. Sorry, my camera's trying to focus on the stuff in the background here, but I want to give you guys something to actually look at. So if I cut the outer sheath, you can see inside we should have, if I can fan them out here, a total of seven inner strands. So you can see them all there. And that's how you'll know it is the proper heavy duty 550 cord. And 550 refers to the breaking strength. So it's really pretty strong, uh, excellent cord for survival situations, of course. So in, a, in any sort of situation, you can cut it open and use these fine inner strands, which in themselves should be composed of three even smaller braids if they're the proper uh, decent quality paracord, so always check that. And uh, so seven of those inside this outer sheath. The outer sheath can be nylon or polyester. Um, I think, I don't know a lot about that, but traditionally I think it was always nylon in military uses and more modern stuff, the cheaper stuff you'll get from China and on eBay is more commonly polyester. but. As far as I can tell from my research, I mean, I don't really find any difference working with the two. I, most of the time, I couldn't really tell you the difference uh, if, you, if you gave me two pieces. Um, I think the story goes nylon is a little softer to the touch. Uh, the, it feels a little softer and smoother, the outer casing. Uh, but uh, polyester is a little less likely to wrinkle. As far as I know, um, I'm no expert on the types. It doesn't really matter. I do know that the two types don't tend to join together very well. So make sure you stick to one particular brand. I think nylon is more expensive. Um, so polyester is usually what you'll see for sale on Amazon or eBay or so on. So there, that's the cord guys. You can see there um, how thick it is and how this one's a, this one is a, a camouflage style. One of the great things about paracord is it comes in pretty much infinite number of colors, styles, designs, uh, which makes it very good for uh, aesthetically as well. So that is the cord itself, 550 paracord, often called uh, type, well, its classification is type 3 550 paracord. I'll show you the inner strands there. Okay. Now, things that can be used for, well, on this piece of cord that I used to demonstrate the, the type of cord, we actually have a decorative knot here. Um, so it's useful for stuff like that. And more aesthetic things would be perhaps uh, weaving sort of ropes and bracelets and stuff like this. So I'll give you some examples of things I have lying around here. Just two cords woven together to form a rope or bracelet. Um, this, got a decorative braid. Again, if you've been around my channel for very long, you've probably seen the tutorials for making all these things. Here we have a couple of uh, paracord woggles used as ranger beads. So if you ever heard of ranger beads and what those are used for, for pace counting or counting any other sort of thing, those are on there for, for that. Uh, monkey's fist. Um, can be used in self-defense, also makes a great oversized key fob, stuff like that. So this is kind of the the, the line between functional and 
excuse me, functional anesthetic or ornate or whatever you want to say. It's also a really fun material to work with just in a relaxing sort of hobby manner. Um, I find that weaving, knot tying to be quite relaxing. So if it's something you get into, perhaps something you want to do in your spare time, uh, just to unwind. So quite useful for that too. So there's a few things on the on the more sort of aesthetic end. Um, the sort of, uh, there's a middle ground of practicality, um, which may be something like this, which is just a simple paracord bracelet. And, uh, you know, you might like the look of that. You might want to wear that as part of your, your EDC or whatever. But also within this, you have maybe, I don't know, eight to 16 feet of paracord woven in there, depending on the design the style, more in this one than this one. Um, so you can be wearing this as a fashionable or fun or a aesthetic element to your to your wardrobe, but it's also got useful cordage in there. And as we see, every cord, of course, has the strong outer shell, but also has all those inner twines, which are useful in in lots of situations. So it's a way of carrying cordage and keeping it on yourself uh, without carrying a big lump of it around. So that's the middle ground. Um, also in the middle ground functionality, if you're watching this channel, you may be into knives. Uh, a lot of people rock knife lanyards such as this one, or here's an even smaller one on this little Victorinox. And uh, a pretty cool little thing. Some people like them, some hate them. Um, I am one of the few people that's sort of in the middle with that. I like it on some knives and really don't on others. On a smaller knife such as this mini Griptilian, you'll find the lanyard actually, uh, in effect, lengthens the handle because it gives you more to grip on back here. And uh, it can be quite useful for that. Also for pulling it out your pocket. Uh, a little lanyard can be quite good, so functional in that way as well. And then going from functionality to the other end of the spectrum, which is more the survival way of thinking, um, you may have something like this, which is uh, you know purely a way of carrying cordage. This is a quick deploy uh, key fob. I can't remember how much cord is wrapped up in here, but it's quite a bit, and it's obviously a very small package that could hang on your keys or on your rucksack or whatever your backpack and is you know that can be deployed in seconds and you have a length of cordage to use for whatever you need. You may have a toolkit something like this in your everyday bag as I do or in a survival bag, your go bag, your bug out bag, whatever. And in here, <coughs> excuse me, I got a cold at the moment. In here I have one of these which if I remember rightly is 50 feet of 550 cord just wrapped up there, neat little bundle, again quick deploy uh, pull that rip stop there and the whole thing comes out. So for survival situation, very useful for rigging shelters, um, you know, all sorts of stuff and uh, really, really useful thing to have on you or in your bag. So something like that stashes quite easily in a kit and uh, yeah, very useful for that too. So those are a few uses and um, pretty much everyone I think can find a way that it kind of fits into their into their lifestyle or into their systems or their EDC or whatever depending how much of a prepper mentality you have. Um, it's probably already a, a material you're very familiar with. So um, some of the benefits and, and plus points of paracord. Let's see, we just have a length here. Um, it's quite an easy material to work with. It's very flexible, um, not particularly susceptible to heat or cold, doesn't stiffen up or anything because it's nylon or polyester. Um, can be tied easily. And as you can see, it still slides quite well on itself due to the low friction of the of the outer shell. Uh, so it can be tied, but it can also be untied quite easily. Quite simple to work with. And uh, yeah, it makes for a good material for practicing knots and weaves and stuff like that. But, um, you know, also good for, for making stuff such as these bracelets that can then be quite easily taken apart and you can free up that cordage should you ever need it. Um, the other, one of the other interesting attributes is the fact that paracord is easily melted. Now, let me cut this here again. Now you'll find that as we melt it, the inner strands and the outer shell will react differently. Let's see if I can manage to get this in focus while not burning myself. So watch as the end of the cord bubbles up and blackens there. I can show you that without burning my phone. Now I'm just going to damp my fingers, a little lick, and squeeze that there. So you can see the end of the cord has melted, and it's actually sealed the inner strands to the outer casing. Um, even with my nail, that's instantly pretty hard. 
I can't break that apart. Um, so, you know, in the way that you'd perhaps have to tie a knot in the end of some types of rope to seal off the end and stop it fraying. <coughs> Excuse me. All you need to do with this is melt the end and uh, that's it sealed, it's locked. The inner strands are, are locked in place and you've that, the full strength of the cord is available and you have a nice neat end that's not going to fray out. At the same time, all you need to do is then go back, cut off your end and instantly you have access to those core strands uh, or you can do whatever with, with the cord now that you've cut the end off. So, uh, very useful property that it can be burned and as we go through and do knots, and different weaves and join cords together and so on um, you'll see just how useful that is so there you go that's another attribute um, it is very easily cut as you can see I'm just using a, excuse me that's a very dirty knife a Victorinox uh, compact here and this is a you know, reasonably sharp knife but just a simple slice there goes right through it scissors on Victorinox are always fairly sharp but not super powerful but even so snip straight through it so Although it is extremely strong due to all those inner strands, um, it is quite easily cut and worked with, which is obviously a plus point as well. Um, so we've gone over the, the uses. Uh, we're going to go through a few different things in the series and look at making both knots and uh, kind of those fobs and things so we can look at the aesthetic and the, the functional, practical and survival aspects of it. Um, one thing if you're working with a lot of cord that's important is of course storage. Um, anyone who's worked with a lot of rope or whatever knows that one thing rope wants to do is knot up and ball up. So to store, I like to use this system. <laughs> and to be honest, I, I've tried a number of different ways. I've kept it in hanks. This is how it came when I bought it. Um, I've actually kept it in large fobs like I showed you in here. Um, it's very, very difficult to keep organized unless you wrap everything on a spool and are super organized. I just don't have time for it. Um, I'm trying to get videos made. I'm trying to do a hundred other things in life. And I don't have time to organize paracord. The great thing about this is that because it is so sleep free sliding on itself, you can quite easily pull stuff out. And it's, it's seldom you get knots forming, even in a box such as this, uh, that you can't get undone quite easily. So don't worry too much about storage. It'll, you know, it'll sort itself out. Um, tools you might find useful. Well, a lighter is obviously useful because we talked about how we can melt it. Any lighter will do, as this two-year-old lighter from Cuba, uh, when I was down there smoking more cigars than making paracord. Uh, you know, this proves the point that any lighter will do. A lot of people swear by jet lighters because they have that fine flame, you can really target where it goes. Probably great, but you don't need it. That's not a big deal. Um, you can get by with one of these or a Bic. Um, something to cut it with. A knife works fine, as you've seen. Scissors are a little better because sometimes you may need to, you know, snip quite close to a knot or whatever and need the accuracy that scissors provide or you may not have a surface you can cut against so being able to hold it in the air and snip with scissors is quite useful. So I definitely recommend something like this or, you know, a small pair of sharp scissors. Uh, knife's obviously useful too to have a separate one from your scissors so you can work with things a little easier. Um, sometimes needle nose pliers can come in quite handy. If you're working on quite an intricate knot, you need to pull some slack out, um, saves broken nails, and uh, you know allows you to get a grip on the end of a cord quite easily. So that's that's uh, yeah, really all you need. Um, there's not a, not a lot involved. If you get into the bracelet making side of things, making guys such as these, uh, a jig can be quite useful. Bracelets can come quite complex. There's a lot of stitching, and it can get quite loose and look a little messy if you're not careful. So a jig such as something like this can be quite useful. Um, I did a, a video some time ago, uh, it's in a simple paracord playlist that I have, I think, um, showing you this. I didn't make this, I bought this one. And they're readily available on eBay and so on, but you can make them quite easily. And uh, you know, you just string up your lines between there, weave your bracelet down to whatever length you want, and it just makes life a little bit easier. So one thing that might be quite useful, but we'll come to that in the bracelet making <coughs> excuse me, in the bracelet making video, which we'll be doing uh, sometime soon. So I think that's about it for today, guys. Uh, we've gone over finishing ends and so on. We'll come to joining cords in the future, uh, which will allow you to do multicolored designs such as this. And uh, yeah, I think that's about all I want to say to introduce this. The next video, we'll probably get into making some basic knots. Um, 
such as maybe these ones here, which are barrel knots. Quite a useful thing, basically for making a sliding knot. You can see you can make a, a like a sliding bracelet, necklace, or noose type uh, device with these. So stuff like that. Um, snake knots such as these ones. A few other simple things, uh, maybe square knots like these. And uh, show that in the next video and then probably get into some more complex weaving and knot tying in the next one. So that's all for today guys, thanks for watching and I look forward to showing you guys some more videos. Have a great day, cheers.